Hello class. So this lesson is 4.2 friction. Now friction is a force that opposes motion, it slows things down. And we've got two types of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. So we're going to start off by saying what these are. Static friction, it is friction that prevents an object from moving on a surface. So static friction, it stops things from moving. So it's, it's only when things aren't moving that we have static friction. Um, it has a maximum. So there is a maximum and we call it F S max. This is the maximum static friction that uh, an object can have on a surface. And any force larger than Fs max will make a stationary object move. Now, different objects will have different Fs maxes. It depends on the object and on the surface that it's on. We'll see that in, um, in just a minute. But okay, that's static friction. That's for objects that aren't moving, and it keeps things from moving. Once you actually get it moving, there's a different type of friction that kicks in, and this is called kinetic friction. This is friction that slows down an object moving on a surface. And so kinetic friction is um, what kicks in once it's actually moving. And we call kinetic friction Fk, like this. So static friction, we call it Fs. The maximum is Fs max. And then we have kinetic friction Fk. So these are both slowing things down. Now, if you look at, um, at sort of how this friction force exists um, as you apply a, a force, we'll look at a little graph down here. So on the left here, we're going to call this, this is our frictional force. And down here, we've got the applied force. And so the idea is here, as uh, when I have an object sitting on a surface, if I start pushing it, and I push it with more and more force, well, the friction that I get back is going to increase, and it's going to keep on going up, so you can see that as I apply, well, one newton of force, I get back exactly the same amount, one newton of friction. And two newtons, I get back two newtons of friction. Three newtons, I get three newtons of friction. The idea is that the friction here is going to perfectly cancel out my action force, because still my object isn't moving. Friction is completely stopping it from moving, so the more applied force I give it, it just fully cancels it out. But then we hit this certain point here, and this is going to be what I talked about, the Fs max, the maximum static friction, at which point friction says, you, you know, I've done as much as I possibly can, you really want to move this thing, so I guess I'll let it start moving. So as soon as, um, as, soon as we get to this point, well, our object starts moving here. The object starts moving. That's at this point here. Okay, up until then we were working with static friction. Static friction. So this is all static friction here. So we get to this Fs max, and then what happens is kinetic friction kicks in. And kinetic friction is lower than that maximum static friction. So kinetic friction, this is our kinetic friction. This is Fk. And you can see that the kinetic friction doesn't change. Once kinetic friction starts, it's constant. So I can drop a little line back here, and we can see that this value, that's the value of Fk. You can see that static friction increases the more force you give it until it reaches the maximum static friction. And then it drops down to kinetic once the object starts moving. 
so that once an object is moving, you've got a constant force slowing it down. That constant force is our Fk. It's not increasing. It doesn't matter how much force you give it. It's going to be constant at that point. Okay, so that's the difference between kinetic and static friction. And um, we can actually talk about kinetic and static friction. Um, we can figure out what their value is going to be fairly easily. So down here we say frictional force depends on two things. It depends on the mass of the object. and the type of materials the type of materials of the object the object and the surface those are the things that friction depends on and so, if we know those I pieces of information, how heavy the object is and the surfaces that are involved, well, we can calculate how much friction force we'll get. Now, when we say the type of materials involved, you'll see down here uh, below there's a table and it says rubber on asphalt, rubber on um, asphalt, steel on steel, all these different situations. Um, those are the sorts of materials you could have. And when you have a certain pair of materials, there's going to be what's called a coefficient of friction between those two materials. And we call that mu. Okay? This is the Greek letter Greek letter mu. M U. Like this. That's that's how we how we say this. So it's it's the letter mu. And it looks like a sort of a U with a long stem on the front. If you've ever used um, torrents and you've seen micro torrent or mu torrent or U torrent, the symbol there that's that's the symbol that's used on that torrent software. Um, okay, so this mu is our coefficient of friction. That's a, a unique number for a pair of uh, surfaces that tells us how how much they rub against each other. So this is. Um, this is sort of, it tells us how much friction we're going to experience. And we can talk about that for friction in general. So we can say that mu, for any given friction, it's going to be equal to the frictional force that we experience over the normal force. Okay? And that's how we, how we talk about our frictional force. We compare it against the normal force that an object is experiencing, how, how heavy it is. Okay, and we can talk about that for static friction. We can say that mu s is equal to the maximum static friction over our normal force. And mu k, our kinetic coefficient, is equal to kinetic friction over the normal force. And the idea is that we've gone out and tested all these different pairs of surfaces. We can look at what happens when we have metal on ice, what happens when we have rubber on asphalt all these different combinations and we just go and we test how much friction they experience against their normal force and we measure these values of mu these coefficients of friction that's where they come from so so we've actually had to go out and measure these experimentally and down here there's a table so you can see um, a bunch of values for mu s a bunch of values for mu k for all these different situations so rubber on asphalt that's useful because we're talking about car tires, for instance, when they're driving. Well, when they're driving in dry conditions, we have this uh, coefficient of friction of 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. Whereas when we're driving in wet conditions, you'll see that it goes down quite a bit, 0 0.25 to 0 0.75. Okay, and you can see steel on steel when it's dry has these values of static and kinetic friction. When it's greasy, it goes down quite a bit. There's a lot less friction when you add some grease. And you'll see that ice on ice is very uh, very low friction. So we have 0 0.1 for the static friction and 0 0.03 once it gets moving. And steel on ice, for instance when you think of skating, well again it has the same static friction but once you actually get moving, once you start skating, very very low friction. And that's, uh, that's an important thing. It's actually, ice is a very good thing for, for reducing friction. 
You can see Teflon. Well, Teflon is a non-stick surface that was invented um, maybe 50 years ago that has a very low amount of friction, and it's good for, for frying pans, for instance, for cooking things. It's a non-stick surface. Okay, so those are some examples of, of, um, of friction. On the next page, there's just two more um, items there. Near frictionless carbon, you can see this is a more new thing that's been invented, and it has very, very low friction. And one last thing here, synovial joints. So this is like in your elbow, in your knee, um, the fluid that's there. And you can see that they have very low friction as well, which is important so that we can bend our joints. Okay. Now, um, we'll look at a few problems now that actually involve these frictional forces. Okay? So, those were the ideas of friction. We're going to try applying them. Remember, the, for equations, the main thing is this mu equals the frictional force over our normal force. We'll see how that works in this problem. It says, a 3.0 kilogram block of wood sits on a horizontal wooden floor. The largest horizontal force that can be applied to the block before it will start moving is 14.7 newtons. So we're going to be talking about static friction here. It's not, it's not moving. You keep on pulling it, and it doesn't start moving until 14.7 newtons. All right. Once the blo block starts moving, it only takes 8.8 .8 newtons to keep it moving at a constant velocity. So that's going to be our um, kinetic friction. And this is going to be connected, connected to our static friction. So we want to calculate the coefficient of static friction first. Well, remember, the coefficient of static friction is this mu s, and it equals our maximum static friction force over our normal force. OK? And, um, and we, we know both of those things. The problem tells us that the maximum static friction is 14.7 newtons. That's when it starts to move. And our normal force is going to be, well, mass times gravity. So 3.0 times 9.8 mg. And when you put that into your calculator, you should get a value of 0 0.50. So that's our mu s. That's our coefficient of static friction. Now we can use that to say, actually, well, we'll, we'll see what this means in a second. The next problem says, determine the force of friction acting on the block if a horizontal force of 6.8 newtons east acts on the block. Okay, so our block has a force of 6.8 newtons. That's less than the maximum static friction. So if you pull it with 6.8 newtons, static friction is still keeping it from moving. It keeps it from moving by perfectly balancing that force out. So if I drew a little picture here, well I'd have of course, normal and gravity, and I would have, um, if I'm pulling it east, this is my action force, and my static friction is going to perfectly balance it out. So we're going to have um, that our Fs, in this case, is equal to Fa. They're perfectly balanced because, because in this case, our 6.8 newtons is less than our Fs max, the maximum static friction. So that just means that Fs is going to equal our action force, which was 6.8 newtons. Now you'll notice it's pointing in the opposite direction, so 6.8 newtons west in this case. That's our static friction here. Good. Okay, now we want to figure out the maximum magnitude of static friction acting on the block if we add some more weight. A 2.1 kilogram has been placed on top of it. So we already know that with the current weight, it had a maximum static friction of 14.7. Right? That's how we got our mu s, this value. We're going to use mu s now. So we know that mu s is equal to f s max over f n. Okay? We have a new mass. m is equal to 3 plus 2.1, so it equals 5.1 kilograms. Okay, we want to find f s max. So this is equal to mu s times f n, which is equal to um, 0 0.50 times our mass, which is 5.1, times 9.8. And this is going to equal 25 newtons. There you go. That's the new maximum static friction. So if we add an extra 2.1 kilograms on top,
and we pull the object, we can pull with 25 newtons before it's going to start moving. Okay, finally, determine the coefficient of kinetic friction. Well, we were told that it started moving when we applied 8.8 .8 newtons. So mu k is equal to the kinetic friction force over Fn. Um, I'm not sure whether what I just said before I wrote that, whether that made sense. We were told that the, the kinetic friction force was 8.8 .8 newtons. So 8.8 .8 newtons over our normal force of 3.0 times 9.8 and you put that in you get 0 0.30 and notice that these coefficients don't have any units they're unitless because it's a force over another force okay that's the lesson that is friction um, good luck and have fun with those homework problems